Now, you can't see it. You can't feel it until you apply it. I hope you grab that because it's for you. No, you're not going to hear no tickling ear sermons on on the gospel music jukebox. Not by me, the evangelist, Brother Eddie Cheney. Now, we may have a guest or two that comes through, and they may slip through the door on me because uh, I may not be paying attention, but I do my best to pay attention to catch it because I invite other ministers. If they say that they are called by God, I want you to come and share the gospel. I want you to come. I want you to send me your MP3s. I want you to share the good news. I want you to, to obey God. I want you to quit begging people for permission to obey God. I want you to stand up and speak with a boldness such as you ought to. And I'm going to keep on encouraging you today that if you are born again, if you are bathed in the blood, if you confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can and you have conquered sin in your life if you will yield to the Spirit of God. All right, we're going to try to jump over here to the phone line. Hold on just a second. You're listening to the Gospel Music Jute Box, and I do encourage each and every listener, and I will continue to encourage. I will continue to cry loud. I will continue to ask you, please, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, those of you that are born again, bath in the blood, those of you that are not ashamed of Jesus Christ, pick up the phone, call, share your testimony, share your praise reports, share your prayer requests. Hey, let's unite. Let's allow God to bring us together in such a way that the enemy cannot tear us apart. Do you hear me? I'm talking to you, my family. All right, be blessed as we listen in to the phone call right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hello, everybody. This is Rachel. And I just want to say there are so many denominational churches and so many that refuse to baptize people and that they want to join their church, take up membership, or go through their church, you know, and like I'd ask that pastor, why do they refuse to baptize people? I got, well, that's really man-made religion. Well, you're sinning. That's um, our guidelines. Well, you're sinning. And like I asked them, you know, and I ask anybody that hears this, Anytime you do anything, especially if you personally don't feel that that it's right, but you do it anyway, you're sitting even worse with somebody don't know no better. So it's time to repent, you know, quit worshiping the church and worship the Lord. Quit fearing the church people and start fearing God, and you'll see a big change. Somebody will baptize, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just like Philip, God said Philip down to baptize the eunuch. Did he ask him where he went to church? This and that, and he, you know, the eunuch has to feel it. What keeps me from being baptized? You have to read that in chapter 8, Acts chapter 8. And he said nothing, and he baptized him. You know, what's the difference in today? Just like John the Baptist. You know, when he baptized people, he didn't check to see where they went to church or this and that. He baptized them, and they Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And people better start doing that today and quit being a stumbling block to so many because we all face judgment to our Holy Father. And he's going to ask why they didn't do it. You know, we're going to have to stand judgment for everything we do and we don't do in this life. And I just I love you all. Bye-bye. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Praise God! Amen. Love you, sis. Thank you for obeying God. My God, let it out. Open your mouth. Be that willing vessel and just allow the Lord's anointing to roll forth. For we know the word of God will not return void. It will accomplish what he sent it for to do. Amen. And that is a a hot topic. I love it because when you get into these pastors and their denominational rules and their handbooks and all these things and you say, you mean you're not going to go water baptized? First of all, I, I don't even know about calling for a pastor to water baptize anyway. I mean, I I don't know about that. I'm not, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to, you know, (laughs) you know, a believer, a believer, a believer. I believe any believer 
can water baptize another believer. Amen? That's what I believe. The Word of God. <laughs> Praise God. We don't need a rule book, a handbook, a guidebook. We've got a book. It's called the Holy Book, the Word of God, the Bible, the King James. Amen? Read it sometime. But you're right, sis. These these denominational churches from from the Pentecost to the Baptist to the to the uh, Jehovah Witness to the to the independent separated man they got no names they got so many names that I can't even think of all the names Whew, my god I'm, I, I asked them this I read where God said go ye out into the world and preach the gospel to every creature where did he say go rent a building where did he say to build a, another building and call it a church where, where, where did he tell you to do that? And I mean, you're not going out. You don't go nowhere. They don't. What they're doing is they're 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 absolutely hurting the people of God. Yeah, these goats. They're 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 hurting them into these buildings so they can fleece them. They can put burden and worry on them because the building becomes the priority, not the body of Christ. Uh, it becomes a priority. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know it's the truth. They become so overwhelmed with the upkeep and the duties of taking care of the property that they forget about God's property, his children. What you have done unto the least of my buildings, you have. he didn't say that. He said, what you have done unto the least of mine, you have done unto me. Do you not get this yet? Wake up before it's too late. Man, it's so good to have uh, Edna in here. I think she's from the Philippines. That's Brother Boyd's fiance, And that's awesome to think that through the Internet tonight, Sister Rachel, Apostle Clovis, uh, Sister Crystal, man, uh, Tassel of us, Brother Boyd, we're all coming together via the Internet from the Philippines, from here in America, and it's untelling who's sitting in the shadows and the byways listening, and it's untelling who's going to hear the archive and how far this program's going to go around the world. Wow, that's awesome. And only God can do that. Man, ain't that powerful. My God, God is good. Amen. All right, let me jump over here and check the phone line. Praise the Lord. It takes me just a minute. This Internet is slow, but uh, we're getting there. Amen. So hold on just a second, and uh, we're going to pull up another one here, and we're going to give it a listen and be blessed. In Jesus' name, my friend, receive what thus saith the Lord tonight to you. Amen. You'll be blessed. Hello, Brother Eddie. God bless you. This is Brother Boyd London in Idaho. I was just calling in. I just wanted to really thank uh, you and uh, everybody involved with the gospel music jukebox there and all my brothers and sisters with that, uh, just for being uh, great brothers and sisters who really love Jesus and who truly go out there and want to help other people and, you know, to preach, who want to preach the Word of God and get people saved. And so, you know, we're trying to help these orphan kids and stuff over on Facebook and different places and pretty much all the groups and stuff have banned us out of there. They don't want any picture, anybody asking for help for homeless people or orphan kids. And if we try to post posts about not sinning or something, they just block us right out of there because everybody wants to live in sin. And they say, James 5.16, you can confess it and you're good to go. Well, that's actually a prayer for people that are sick with sin you're supposed to confess it and have people pray for them so you can get the sin out of your life and stop doing it you're not supposed to keep doing it they don't know that but uh anyhow i know uh i was just talking to pastor edwin in kenya and uh and uh i know a lot of the people involved with the gospel music jukebox a lot of you have helped us out to be able to help those kids over there at different times and uh the kids all say thank you and the pastor also and and uh your guys' group over there on Facebook, uh, that one we have going is one of the only, my own group is one of the only groups that we're left in over there because everybody else has just kicked us out of there. So, And uh, I just really appreciate it because uh, I know that, uh, you know, a lot of the people that listen to the gospel music jukebox and are involved, Apostle Clovis Robinson and Rachel Honeycutt and her family there and, and uh, all the Robinsons and, and there's just a, 
a lot of you that listen and really love Jesus and who will really go out there and help people and actually do something for Jesus, which is just great, and I'm happy to know all of you. Just wanted to say God bless you, and I'll be praying for you. And every day, let's say no to sin. Let's not let the sin in our lives like the people in the world do and the fake Christians do. Let's go out there and help people in any way that we can every day. Uh, those around us, orphan kids if we can, homeless people, anybody we can help. I'm helping people in prison also. It's good to help them. And let's preach the word of God to everyone we can and tell them about Jesus. Jesus will heal them. Jesus will get the sin out of their life. Jesus will set them free. They can turn their lives to Jesus and they can live a new, changed, sin-free life. And they can go out there and help people and be in the kingdom of God, live their lives for Jesus and make it to heaven. So let's help people get to heaven and follow Jesus Christ. Love you all and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother boy. My God. I love you, man. And hey, Sister Rachel, you're my other twin. See, we're twins. See, I love that picture. <laughs> I really do. That's my angel, Gracie, there with me. Uh, you guys will never know how precious that moment was to me in my life. Uh, God definitely uh, has placed a purpose, whew, man, uh, with with not only this Gracie, but we have Gracie in Mississippi. We have we have man, so many children that God has put in our life that. Uh, you know, this is how important it is that we proclaim the truth. Those children need to know. They need to know that we're not ashamed to stand up and proclaim his holy and righteous name. You see, look here, they're watching you. They're watching everyone. Those little eyes, and those little ears are listening. Man, how powerful is it that we must continue to, to endure to the end, we must continue to be in obedience with the word of the Lord. We must continue to walk upright. We must continue to cry loud and spare not. We must tell people the truth. The truth will set you free. Whew, my God. All right. Uh, Amen. Amen. I'm glad to glad to hear that um <laughs> that uh apostle's feeling better. I love it when he's when he's in that mischief mood. It lets us know that his spirits is up. Man, we love you, Apostle Clovis Robinson. You will never know how much not till you leave this world because uh, God put you in my life. You see, it was not by accident that you stumbled across my little radio program. And No, God sent me to you, brother. He sent me there, not only to encourage you, but for you to encourage me. And, brother, we are twined together. We are hooked in the jaw. Brother Boyd, we're hooked. I love you, man. Sister Rachel, we're hooked. Sister Annette, Apostle Michael, my God, you guys listen to me. God is hooking us in the jaws. We are tightly woven together, even to the marrow of the bone. Listen, we are the body of Christ. We are the church, along with Edna and those around the world that are born again. We have family we have yet to meet. We'll not meet them all here on this side of eternity, but we will meet them all. My God, even though we're few in numbers, because it's few that stay on that little narrow road. You know, many go to the wide path. It's easy to fit in. It's easy to, well, give up. It's easy to walk away. You see, the devil himself can't pluck you out of the hands of God, but you can walk away. You can choose. See, here's what we're telling you each and every day of your life. You have to make choices. And each time the enemy throws something at you, you have to make a choice. Listen to the Spirit of God. Allow it to lead you to safety or listen to self. Listen to the world and, and you'll be drugged to the pits of hell. You have to make a choice. And God's given you the power to overcome the enemy. You're just not applying it. What are you afraid of? You afraid somebody's going to get mad at you? Hey, honey, they already mad at you. They already spreading lies and rumors on you and I. They already talk about us like a dog. They already make up things in their own imagination. They already are full of wickedness and tail bearing and lies.